Welcome back. I'm visiting family and it's raining. Well, it's, it's not raining right now, thankfully. It's a little bit wet, but it's so beautiful. I wanted to shoot out here and share with you a little video about no fear. Have no fear. This is the message which is encapsulated by the Bible. And I wanted to shed some light on this dualistic process and how the yogi can encounter it. So let's get into it. If you go through the Bible mathematically and you search for what is the most used phrase throughout the entire Bible, the New and the Old Testament, it is have no fear. Mathematically, that is the heart of the Bible. That is the most often repeated phrase. And when you count the amount of messages which say, have no fear or be not afraid. Same meaning, slightly different phrase, but that's the meaning, right? Have no fear. It's 365, so they say. So if you look this up online, have no fear. It's 365 times that meaning is presented in the Bible. That is the primary message of the whole thing. And it's because it is teaching a dualistic process. So in yoga, we do the yoga, we enter into the low idle state and we begin to get into bliss and expansion. And that causes us to become merged with those. We move our identification from our personality, which is a left brain process, into union with those deep and profound and vastly expansive ideas of the divine and that is the non-dual state or the samadhi state. So we enter through absorption into a union state of samadhi. That is the heart of yoga. The Bible is presenting a dualistic process which will also happen to the yogi. So if you go into the diaries of Lahiri Mashaya, which you can't do, nobody has his diaries, but if you read the Purana Purusha and who is Shyam Sharan, and I'll, I'll have links below. If you read those stories about the diaries of Lahiri Mashaya, he would go into meditation, he would go into a union state, and he would come back out and he would have a dualistic process. Or it might happen before the Samadhi. So he, he would have an experience with a form of the divine, such as Kali or Krishna or Shiva. And then he would go into a union state and he would even, it might even be the same one. So he might see Kali in a vision. Then he might go into a union state with Kali. And then he might come back out of the Samadhi and have another vision of Kali. Or maybe it's Shiva. So he would see Shiva, he would have a union state with Shiva, he would come back out, he would have another vision of Shiva. So it's very normal, it's very natural for a yogi to see a form of the divine. And then if the yogi is going very deep, it's possible to have a union with that same divine form. To realize your identity is part of that whole. Right? That's the Samadhi state. But then he would come back out and he would have another vision, which is informing his dualistic experience of life. And so it's this beautiful back and forth play between form, no form, form, no form. And that's the joy of expression of the dualistic process for the yogi, is that it informs and fills and makes a joyous divine play out of my life when I go back and forth between a dualistic experience of the divine and a union state of the divine. And that's why I did the third training on my website, talking with the higher self. That's why I did that. I want to make sure that all everybody has access to that back and forth, right? 
I wanted to make sure that we can have a simple process to begin that journey of having a dualistic experience while we're pursuing the union state, absorption and samadhi. We're pursuing that, but we can also have and recognize and enjoy these dualistic experiences with a form of the divine, with our favorite, our ishta devata. The, our divine favorite, our favorite form of the divine. And very often, it's just a guardian angel. People tell me, you know what? I decided it's going to be my guardian angel. And that is a beautiful expression of the divine. It's absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. So how is the Bible teaching this? It's teaching it through prayer. Pray without ceasing. Go into prayer. Don't go on the street corners. Go in your closet, very much like the yogi. Go in your closet and pray. And your Father in secret will answer you. So through the Bible, what is being shared is a relationship between the left brain and the right brain. The right brain is the expression of the guardian angel, of the divine, which sees everything in your life as one. So you, the mountain, the house, the car, the street, everything is you. Everything is made of the same substance. Everything is one. That's the divine perspective. That's the perspective of the guardian angel, which sees your life as a whole, not as parts. But we're in the personality. We're identified with the little body, running our little lives. And so we're using the left brain. The divine guardian angel is using the right brain. And those two parts together are forming a harmony through a process of prayer. And that's what the Bible is espousing. And so what is the very basis of that relationship between your left brain and your right brain is have no fear. There is a greater force. There is a guardian angel. There is a divine presence looking over you and your entire life continuously. So pray and have no fear. That is the bedrock message of the Bible. It's a dualistic process, which is a wonderful addition to a non-dual practice. Very often, the yogi will encounter that kind of relationship completely spontaneously. As you're going deep into the low idle state, it can spring forth absolutely spontaneously. But if you want to develop it, then you can use a process like prayer or a streamlined process like the progression of talking to the higher self and the angel exercise that I present. So it's a really, really wonderful way to get to know ourselves and this back and forth relationship between the two hemispheres. Because when that's flowing, when it's really working, we should have no fear. We should be at ease. We should be in a continuous state of ease and relaxation through renouncing our need to control everything because the divine right side has our back always. So I hope you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you.